Welcome parents to another conversation starter. Pastor Mario here. Today we have Jackson. Howdy. <laughs> Jackson, as you all know, serves on the youth leadership team. He was away in Utah for a while doing some real deal missionary work. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but he is back and he's been joining us and serving uh, with the youth again and the youth have been excited to have him back. Um, so as you guys know, we have been going through sexuality series called Beautifully Woven. And last night we hit week three, it's five weeks. And so we hit the topic of sin. So the first two weeks we were talking about, you know, sexuality, is sexuality who we are? If it's not, then who are we? Talked about the image of God the second week. And then last night we talked about how, like how all that changes when sin enters the picture, right? That That's pretty fair. Yeah. Um, so then we talked, you know, we gave three things that sin the way that sin affects God's good design, specifically humanity. He said that sin will convince us God is not enough. Sin will suppress the truth of God's word and sin will produce morals and lifestyles in us that go against our design. And I think the students handled it pretty well. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, I, no one up and left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know, did you have any thoughts about the night? Anything that we... Yeah, didn't have any middle schoolers getting up and going, oh, this theology isn't... <laughs> what? Is... I, don't know, I don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of, they, they were receptive. Mm-hmm. Now, it was a fairly low night. Right. I mean, we had maybe a quarter of the students that we usually get. So, this is definitely, you know, beneficial for... Those students, like I would encourage you parents, if your students were not at youth group last night, uh, to watch this with them. Um, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, do, uh, I don't know if you had any, uh, just like takeaways, I guess, for, you know, as as we're trying to like help parents kind of get a recap of the night. Right. Um, what are any Jackson takeaways? Uh, I thought it was really constructive to, because we kind of, we went through uh, part of creationism again in Genesis, yeah. where you know God is creating man and sin enters the picture. Mm-hmm. And I think it was really constructive for them to kind of connect that to their own lives mm. now. Yeah, um, because like the Bible in and of itself can be difficult to <laughs> yeah. connect with. Yeah, and now we're going back to like the first story in it, (laughs) the oldest thing in there. So I'm always a fan of trying to connect those perspectives. uh, And I think that, I mean, they were really receptive to it. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was, I mean, I think, I think the reason why they were so receptive to it is what you and Dawson kind of started even before I was here, the back to the basics, starting Mm. in Genesis. And so the fact that we've spent a year in Genesis, I think probably helps (laughs) with them like, okay, I can get used to seeing this as applicable. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I thought it was really, I thought it's nice that we can go back to Genesis and kind of revisit those same things on a different topic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of culturally relevant and relevant for the students. Um, So yeah, like you're saying, like, we're a fan of trying to make that happen. Um, so yeah, so it was good. We had some, I mean, we had we had good questions kind of brought up. I think a student brought up like, cause I mentioned something like, we don't want to treat sin like a pet. And that's kind of a way of me saying like, don't tolerate sin. Like we don't want it to just kind of be right. in our house. And we just feed it and we give it a place to sleep, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of deal. And so they brought up like, what does that mean to treat sin like a pet. And I thought that was pretty clarifying. Um, and yeah, I think there were some other things that were brought up. I think Mark brought up some good things, you know, about his own testimony mm-hmm. in regards to sin. Um, but yeah, I think for the most part, we got 
kind of the main thing out of the way of like, all right, God has created this design. He's created us as hum humans as good. Sin enters the picture and fractures it. And that gives us the answer of kind of like why things are so confusing right now, why there's violence, why there's all these things. So, uh, so parents, we have two questions for you guys. Um, the first one, well, both have scriptures that you can connect to, heck, maybe even read Genesis 3 again, <laughs> you know, the fall. Yeah. Um, so the first one, and I'd love your thoughts on like kind of, you know, piggybacking off of this question, your thoughts on like, yeah, maybe this would be a good thing to mention in light of the question or something. Uh, so read John 3, 16 through 17, super popular verse, but don't take it for granted in light of sin. What does this tell us about God's heart towards us in light of sin's corruption of humanity? So trying to get the student to understand the reality of sin, but how God sees us despite the sin. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what are your, what do you think, like, in regards to that? Like, that may help the parents kind of frame the question, you know, in a way that maybe won't sound like. Yeah. I mean, at youth group, uh, at the end, you asked them what, I think it was like, what, how does this, lesson challenge you mm -hmm. and how does it encourage you oh yeah and i think that that's a good kind of add-on to that question uh, and it seems like based on their answers they were they were comprehending yeah. you know the material pretty well okay already and all at the same time that's a really good point to revisit and i think that this question mm -hmm. will help a lot with that yeah just in terms of like you know really looking at what the good news is and how, you know, how it changes our lives, you know, for the better. Yeah. And how we need to make sure that we are maintaining our side of things. Yeah. 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 Which makes sense. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it, it will help. It will help them to assess themselves. And that's kind of the mm -hmm. question is like, you know. What was challenging? What was encouraging? Um, like, are you comprehending what we're saying? Right. <laughs> you know? yeah. And what are you getting from it too? You know. So I think that'd be a good way to frame frame the question. Um, and then you had a really good question that I thought would probably lead to like a a lot of good conversation. You know, if there, if there's nothing like if the student is responding to anything like that with that, I think the one that you posed, you know would be a great way to kind of like play with the scriptures almost and kind of think about it and apply it. Mm -hmm. So your question, what was, what was the one that you were thinking? That was, the verse was John 8, 7, yep. right? Yeah, so that's the one about uh, Jesus saying, he who is without sin may cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. um, and again, drawing some parallels here to our lives. What exactly does that look like? for you in terms of A, you know, existing as a sinner inherently, mm. and B, interacting with other sinners who may or may not even care yeah. about sin. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and it really gets to, uh, again, our heart towards people that God loves, mm -hmm. like, like if you, kind of almost piggyback off of the question that we asked. Like God's heart is, I don't want any to perish. Mm -hmm. I've given my son despite their sin. And this question gets at, okay, am I reflecting that too? Like, do I see myself as being okay and I'm better than them because I've kind of figured it out? So it kind of sets the playing field. And I'd say read read the whole kind of situation. Right. You know, but focus in on that, Yeah. you know. He who is without sin may cast the first stone. I thought that was a solid question. <laughs> That's Jackson for you. <laughs> so yeah, so two questions. Uh, yeah, and if your student wasn't at youth group last week or last night, 
have them watch the video so they kind of get an understanding of like what we talked about. Next week, we're gonna be talking very specifically about pornography, which is, I mean, as you know, it's prevalent in our culture. All over the place. <laughs> All over the place, promoted, celebrated. Um, and so we kind of need to talk about it when we're talking about this kind of stuff. So all that to say, if you're a student or if you as a parent have any reservations about that conversation or if you haven't had that conversation with your student already and you're not comfortable with them coming and hearing it from youth leaders, youth pastor, around other kids, use your own discretion, hold them back from that. But we will be talking about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we will be ironing through it. So we pray and hope that you guys will have some good conversations and we will see you in the next one. Hello, parents. This is Pastor Mario. Uh, thank you guys for joining us for this, this week's conversation starter. If you want more um, ways that you can engage with your youth, you could check out the uh, other conversation starters here on my side. Thank you guys for joining us. Hope you guys are doing well.